Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm finally back for another Fake Grand Order video. I was away for a bit because <laughs> I was busy with work. But I'm off of work and I'm able to record this at a reasonable time. I tried to record this uh, last night and it was a another adventure of ASMR Wilkie, but it didn't turn out as well as I wanted. So here we go! Uh, I'm going to be talking about the two units. One of them that is already out, which is Team and King Nobunaga, and the other one is the next banner that's going to be following up, which is going to be Hijikata, which is he is featured right here. Uh, and this is a part of the Guda Guda, I forget what we're calling it, the U... It was called something different in, in Japan, but for us it's called the new Yamatekoku Pickup 2, which is related to this event right here. So I'll be going over them too, and very briefly talk about the four stars that are also with them, but not very much because I want to try and upload this immediately, which is why it's going to be uploaded at a weird time. Alright, so, to start... Um, if you don't know the banner structure, this is how it is, is that she debuted, uh, yesterday, which is the 4th. Hijikata should be here on the 6th, and then from then on it will be, uh, let me see, yeah, it's Himiko next, and then followed up Okita, and then it's, uh, Koni, Okita Alter, uh, I was about to say, it is Sakamoto, it's Ryoma, Sakamoto, Ryoma, and Old Man Lee. We'll be talking about right here, and then all of them also feature Mori. Mori is a limited three star, so if you don't have Mori at MP5, it's a nice bonus thing to get him to get him to that level. Uh, the four stars that are going to be included for Demon King Nobunaga are Summer Nobu, and to very quickly just talk about Summer Nobu, I really like Summer Nobu. Um, she's a single target anti divine. Uh, so if you have a specific need to fight against a divine, which is the same thing that's going to be kind of said about the uh, the Demon King Nobunaga, if you're ever against a divine uh, raid boss of any kind, she comes in pretty clutch and is really nice. Mine is like 10-10-10. Uh, really cool, and plus I like her summer design a whole bunch. This is a really nice, it's really nice art over here, as, as is expected from Paco. So that's going to be featured on Demon King Nobunaga's. And then Saito Hajime over here will be featured on Hijikata's banner. He's a part of the Shinsengumi. He's a saber. He's also arts. The one thing I'll say is that there's a lot of single target art sabers in the game. So if you want him, make sure, if you are specifically looking for a single target arts, he'll be perfectly good. But there are better options. But if you all you care about is Saito himself, then he's going to be your dude right here. So those are the two four stars that are both limited. And now I'll talk about the actual five stars, starting with Demon King Nobunaga, who already had her banner. So feel free to tell me how you did. I know one person who was very excited because he has nonstop been talking about Demon King Nobunaga since, I don't know, maybe a month back or so. Demon King Nobunaga. Uh, she's a, an Avenger. Um, there is also a male counterpart, which is also funny right here. But I'll just use she for the time being, because uh, usually when I think of Demon King Nobunaga, I think of this one right here. Um, Demon King Nobunaga, she has uh, one quick, two, one arts, three buster, four hits on quick, four hits on arts, six hits on buster, five hits on extra. Her first skill is It's Inevitable, A-, minus, grant self attack up when increased, uh, which increases every turn for three turns, 500% chance to grant self the burning battlefield for three turns, and then 500% chance to uh, inflict burn on stackable with, with 1000 damage to self for three turns. And the way that this skill basically works, and this is at level 10, is that you start with 30% attack, and then on the third turn you'll have 70% attack up, so it'll get up in increments of 20%. And obviously that changes depending on what level it is, like at level 1 you have 20% and then you gain 10% and you end up on 40%. But obviously when you get it to level 10 it's like that. And it's a cooldown of 5. Her second skill, after strengthening, is as if it was a dream, B++, uh, grants health invincibility for one turn, increases own buff removal resistance for a single turn, and then increases own damage against sky attributes on the burning battlefield for three turns, 100% buff removal resistance and the burning versus sky damage is 50%, also on a cooldown of six. Third skill, Demon King of the Six Heavens EX, um, which is the strength thing she just recently got, gained critical stars every turn for three turns, charges own MP gauge for NA. On JP, they've had this for a while, and in increases own buster performance on the burning battlefield for three turns. Star regen is 10, NP uh, uh, increase is 30%, and the burning buster damage is 30% on a cooldown of 5. And this is a very good buff because this makes her actually be able to use with the main buster looping method that we have right here, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But to continue on, her passive skills are Avenger B-, Oblivion Correction E, and Self-Replenishment Magic C. Her third append skill is the Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the Hajuna Henjo Sanzen Daisen Tenmao 
The Puppius Metamorphosis, the Demon King of the Billionfold Heavens, a rank A minus anti divine, hits six times, Buster, and it removes all divinity defensive buffs. This activates first. It deals damage to all enemies and then inflicts burn with a thousand damage for five turns for, to them. Her, at MP level one, the damage is 300%, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 500%, and then she deals extra damage against the divinity on overcharge. At the first overcharge level, it's 150%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 200%. And that is Demon King Nobunaga. There is also something to make mention, because this is true for all Nobunagas, but it is <laughs> something to think about whenever you're using them. Uh, there's an entire unit that exists only to buff specifically Nobunaga's servants, and that's uh, Oda Nobukatsu over here. Uh, he's a uh, he's in the welfare banner. Usually during Guda Guda, they bring him back. He's a welfare. Um, he's an archer, and his noble phantasm is literally just Yo Nobunaga gets stronger, and then I also give you some MP increase, which isn't uh, which is very good in general. All his skills are kind of attuned to make sure that she does whatever she needs. She needs crit damage. She needs buster damage. Whatever they need, she's he's gonna provide to them. MP generation. <laughs> Uh, oh, increase own generator. Uh, increase, yeah. All very good here. Um, and something to keep in mind for all Nobunagas going forward. But anyway, Demon King Nobunaga, how is she? Uh, well, when she launched, she was definitely not the greatest unit in the world. She was definitely one that you could find use for her, but she was lacking in a lot of things. And now, she's actually super good as a just a universal. If you just need to fight something and hit it and not care about anything else, then she'll be used for that uh, greatly because she is an uh, Avenger, so there's not a lot of things that um, she has di disadvantage against. She's Buster, so she gets a lot of Buster help from that. And she ends up being pretty good for it. If you don't know, the reason I said that it's a lot of it comes down to this third skill. So I'm going to explain this just very quickly in case you just don't know. Um... Three in terms of Fago farming, there's looping, which is trying to beat something in three turns. And in three turns, the way you do that with Buster is that they have like a bread and butter combo, which is two coin skyas and an Oberon. And in order to use this very basic combo that almost every Buster unit can use, you need to have at least an end uh, a skill that gives you back 30% NP. And previously, before the strength thing, she did not have it, but now she does have it, and it lets her be able to do it. If you're curious how it works, is that you have to have her with a 50% starting CE, and then with mana loading, which is the second of pen skill here, you get 20%, so now you're at 70% NP. And then with the third skill, you get back the 30%, and then you're at 100%, and you launch your Noble Phantasm. And then on the second turn, you double Koyan, and then she gets all her skills back, because as long as your skills are lower than 6, you'll be able to get them back. And thankfully for her, all her skills are on really low cooldowns, actually. Um, you shoot off your MP on the second turn, and then on the third turn, you replace one of the Koyan Skyas with Oberon. Oberon provides 70%, and all you need is that last 30%, and that's where this MP stuff goes in. And that is the most basic combo of how to get it done. Obviously, if you have a starting, uh, if you have the ability to give yourself 50% MP, that just makes you better, and it removes some of the steps like having mana loading and stuff like that. But for the most part, that is the most basic way of doing it. If, you, if you're a buster unit and you're not able to loop in that kind of way, you're gonna have to look for other ways to kind of make it work and stuff like that like using maybe kaleidoscope or doing something but usually the reason we say the 50 percent is because that means when you have an event ce which most of them at this point is 30 percent at the start and when you max limit break it it's at 50 percent that's how it ends up working and you can see why this is like the basicness of it all but that's the quick explanation for it she ends up finally with this skill being able to do that so that makes her very good for actual farming um the only thing that would probably be a slight hindrance is it depends on if the opponent has high HP because on turn one, because she doesn't get this full benefit right away and it's only 30%, there are occasional times where she won't be able to do enough damage, maybe, but that's usually able to be fixed very obviously by just getting an additional NP, but if you don't want to go that far, you can try using Grails, you can use Golden Foes, or you can try leveling up the CE, whatever you can to pump up that last little bit of damage to make it a little bit less 
likely to happen to you, which is something that was similarly happened to Dantes whenever it was like a specific node that had very high HP allies, not allies, uh, enemies at the first, uh, in the first wave of it. And then by the second and third wave, she's much better at handling it because obviously she gets more power from this and stuff like that. And that's how she looks like as a farmer. In terms of not using her as a farmer, she can still be used pretty effectively. The reason is is that um, she actually has a very niche but very useful skill here with increased buff removal resistance, which means that during certain challenge quests where they <laughs> where you're constantly fighting someone who removes your buffs, she can actually with resist that and not actually have to suffer for it, which comes in handy when you're fighting it. If you're ever fighting someone who is of the divine and the sky, she can deal a lot of damage. This skill will just outright give her uh, bonus damage of 50% through all attacks, but on her NP, she gives additional damage to the divinity enemies, which can come in pretty handy. Uh, makes it very nice to be able to, similar to Summer Nobu, just be able to whittle down any divine enemies that you may fight. Um, and she has the ability to give herself the Burning Battlefield, which is something not a lot of units have, which is the ability to give themselves the battlefield that gives them all the buffs. Uh, some units have it, not every one of them have it, but she has it on her first skill. And thanks to Koyanskaya, you're actually able to keep up the Burning Battlefield to a good amount, because this has cooldown of 5, and with double Koyan, you'll be able to get that back pretty easily. And then when we eventually get the Append skills, I assume that with skill reloading, it means that you'll be able to keep up Burning Battlefield for a really decent and around a long time. And, and again, if you're looking for more challenging quest type stuff, you also have Nobukatsu to kind of provide you some additional benefits if you want to use them. So overall, it's a unit that has like a lot of options to them. They've buffed her to hell and back, so thank god <laughs> that she actually is as good as she is now. It's funny that um, at a certain point when you give a unit this many buffs, they have to be at base level good. <laughs> Because if they're not, then maybe you're running into some issues of like, man, we buffed them how much and they're still not at a decent level? That That's kind of sad. But that's Nobu, uh, that's Demon King Nobunaga. Best of luck to anyone who summoned for her. Feel free to tell me how you did. I badly have always wanted a Demon King Nobunaga because I think the design of her is awesome. The idea that she is literally every single Nobu across <laughs> everything. So you have the Guda Guda Nobu that we expect. We have older Nobu. Nobunaga, she has like actual Nobunaga somewhere deep inside the spirit, uh, spirit origins. We have actual just male <laughs> Nobunaga. Um, really good stuff. I really like it. Um, but damn, I, I just can't justify going for it. I failed so many times that I don't think it's ever going to happen for me. But that's Demon King Nobunaga. And now we'll go on to the other unit, which is Hijikata. Hijikata of the Shinsengumi. So here he is, Hijikata. He has two quicks, one arts, two buster, three hits on quick, two hits on arts, two hits on buster, three hits on extra. His active skills are Demon of the Battlefield, B, which is an increase to party's buster performance for three turns, increased party's critical star generation rate for three turns. It's 20% the buster and 20% the star rate on a cooldown of five. His second skill is the Furious Journey B+, which is removes zone debuffs, recovers zone HP, grants self a gut status for one time, three turns, revives with a single HP, stackable with other guts on a cooldown of five. Um, his third skill is the Laws of the Shinsengumi EX, which is increases critical star absorption for a single turn, increases own crit damage based on own uh, remaining HP for three turns, crit damage formula equals 20% plus 80%. Uh, one minus current HP to max HP and then charges on MP gauge with a 500% chance to deal 1000 damage to yourself without killing yourself. The absorption is 400%, the MP is 50-30% and cooldown is a 5. His only passive skill is Madness Enhancement D+, which feels low for how crazy Hijikata is, but it's an increase to own Buster performance for 5%. His third skill is an anti-alter ego critical attack chance resistance and his rank, uh, his Noble Phantasm is a rank C++. After his interlude, the Shinsengumi, the Immortal Sincerity, C++, hits five times, it's Buster, deals damage to a single enemy, and MP level 1, it's 800% damage, and if you get them all the way to MP level 5, it's 1200% damage. His overcharge effect, which is a further, deals damage to them based on own remaining HP. Additional damage formula, equal multiplier based on overcharge. 
1 minus current HP to max HP. Uh, at charge level 1, it's 800% additional damage, and if you get them all the way to a, the final charge level, it's an additional 1,200% bonus damage, uh, depending on how much uh, HP you have remaining. And that is Hijikata. Um, there's a lot to say about Hijikata. One, uh, at in his max potential, he is likely able to do a buttload of damage, whether it's through his Noble Phantasm or his own crits just on anything. He should be able to get just a buttload of damage the lower his HP is. Uh, the problem is, is that he's a Berserker. And you know what Berserkers are really good at? Randomly dying to a crit out of nowhere. <laughs> So, yeah, it ends up being this weird case of he's a unit where if you're playing the, his specific gimmick and you're living the dangerous life, you should be able to do a lot of damage and kill him pretty quickly. But the inverse is that, like, something breathes on you and then you just instantly lose. Like, this ability here helps him a little bit, but it doesn't help him all that much. Um, it, he's a very, like, hmm, what's the right way of saying it? Um... You have to really think <laughs> when you're planning ahead on Hijikata and you have to be okay with using a unit that you know for a fact is not long for this world. Because if you want to take mass, mass advantage of what he's actually capable of, um, you're going to have to have him at low HP and the lower his HP is the more likely he is to just die even if you want to if you want to just get for example maximum damage and use him with the black rail you also have to understand that your dude is basically living on borrowed time because at any point the the black rail could kill him because if you want to do maximum damage you have to of course get low on hp you get too low on hp the black rail will then kill you it's a whole dichotomy here so he ends up being a unit that if you um want to take full advantage of you really have to kind of plan around and like see how to make them work and if you are someone who likes to have fun with those type of units and he is going to be perfect for you if you're not someone like that then chances are that hijikata is an extremely easy like pass by for you because it's like yeah he does he does a uh, it's high risk high reward instant death constantly looming over your head <laughs> Um, Hichikata has also always been one of those units. If you, you know, because I, I try and be as, I give as much information as I get for a unit, even if I don't particularly like them. I actually do like Hichikata as a character. Uh, I think he's funny. And I like, uh, in general, Hijikata thanks to Gintama. Um, mainly thanks to Gintama, but obviously Hijikata is a known Japanese character because he is based off the actual, uh, Hijikata from history. Um... So I do like Hijikata, and I do like the Shinsengumi, and I've always wanted to try and use him, but unfortunately, every time I tried to use him, I ran into a lot of issues of, like I said, of the, the always dying, and then whenever I did do damage, it was like, not enough damage. Um, but at the same time, whenever I brought it up, they were like, you know, you should give him just like another chance, and I was going to give him an additional chance because at the hit his best he wants to fight in like a kind of a single um hp bar because obviously if an enemy has more than one hp bar he's going to get just instantly he's gonna lose that grind game <laughs> he'll be able to take that like the single bar before they like instantly break bar get their full noble phantasm hit him with the noble phantasm and then he just dies instantly and it's not it's not anything because he has no form of protection outside of a single guts that is on a cooldown of five which is not bad but it's still only a single guts You'd have to find ways to get him additional guts and stuff like that. And it, it, doing it through CE would mean that you would get him, you would give him even less guts and stuff like that. But anyway, I was ready to use him against one of the raid bosses, which was going to be specifically Ivan. Um, and then what happened on NA? We skipped Ivan. So I had this full idea of how to use <laughs> Hijikata to his max to be able to have him at super low HP and to be able to quickly kill Ivan and... And then they fucking, they, we just skipped Ivan. It was the most annoying thing ever. So I have mine at full 10, 10, 10 skills ready to be used on something to just show him that, um, just to show me that, like, actually he is a good unit. Because I have him at MP2. I didn't try and get him MP2. Back when his banner first released, I was summoning for the craft essences, and I got Hijikata instead. And I was like, well, this, this is kind of annoying. He doesn't, he's not really a unit that... Uh, plays to my kind of play style. So I've been trying over the years to try and find something for him and I've never been able to do it. 
and I think I'm finally gonna actually try for this one during this event to see if I can get Hijikata up and running in that full capacity and stuff like that. Because like I said, I I really do like him. It's just that, man, real unfortunate how it all turned out <laughs> at the end of the day. But anyway, that's Hijikata. Wish you the best of luck if you go for him. Uh, like I said, I do think he's a cool unit. He's got a lot of cool looks, so I'm like, how can you not just find that absolutely cool and stuff like that? <laughs> Even his little silly uh, Rio art is really good. But anyway, that's Hijikata. Uh, feel free to tell me how you feel about Hijikata. I'd be interested to hear how other people have for him. And if you specifically like Hij Hijikata, please tell me how you actually use your Hijikata, because I would love to uh, see it and look at the team build and be like, okay, let me try and replicate that for myself to better get a better understanding with Hijikata because uh, I, uh, that's helped me in the past. It, th there were two other units that were similar to Hijikata where I was like, these units were never good for me. And then I actually talked to people and they're like, hey man, try them again and this was going for this kind of specific build. And then when I did do that, it went much better. So I'm very thankful for a lot of the people who are willing to like share their specific knowledge for it. Um, and the best way to enjoy Fago is that if you don't understand something, feel free to ask. That's why I try and help as many people as I can. But anyway, I've talked long enough. That's the end of the video, everyone. I'm sorry it's releasing at a weird time. Hopefully things will go back to normal. <laughs> I have some other stuff planned as well. I have other things for the future uh, planning out right now. Um, including some videos that are going to be upcoming pretty soon. And some other ones that I want to celebrate for reaching a specific personal goal that I reached after many years of never thinking I would reach it, which I have a video planned for that. It's not going to be really related to Fago, so unfortunately a vast majority of you are not going to watch it, but it's okay. It's more of a history thing. It's for it's a for me thing and for the people who have been with me for that many years, like nine plus years, <laughs> you know. Anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It, um, the channel has been growing a real lot, and it's made me motivated to keep going, and uh, even though I am tired from work and I'll be like, I really don't want to record a video. I remember there are people who actually um, like me making videos and that motivates me to go forward. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Till next time, goodbye.